Let me introduce you to Hedvig, having a conversation about all the things that you don't worry about when you use cloud infrastructure that maybe is limiting your options to have the needs resolved from your enterprise infrastructure. So one of the first things to think about is what the data driver, enterprise applications, unstructured data, web scale applications, big data, IoT, machine learning, artificial intelligence, you name it. Then the next thing is where will be this connected to an application, a hypervisor, a container, another service or several services, a cloud infrastructure. There are lots of options, but this must not be a limitation for your decisions. The type is really important. We usually think about, will this be my primary storage? Will it be secondary? Will I use this to archive information, to backup? Will I have this for long time retention? Now we have a related concept is, will this, will this be my production environment or a replica or a backup or disaster recovery environment? Will I have this to do long-term retention of information? These kind of factors are really important, but I think that we should not be limited or influenced by these decisions to design the storage we need. We have several decisions regarding physical location. Will this be in our main data center, a secondary one in both of them, in one cloud, in several clouds, in all of these places at the same time? And this is really usual these days. Who will own this infrastructure? Will it be, the, will it be ours? Will it be co-located in some place? If it's a cloud, we have several options to choose from. Another really important factor is the vendors. They are traditional vendors, HPE, Hitachi, NetApp, EMC, IBM. And then we have the new ones. Some of them make use of new technology and others really create new paradigms based in software and new functions. And what about the architecture? We have traditional control-based appliances, and then we have clusters of storage. And the new fancy name though about hyper-converged infrastructure. Is this good for everything? Or should the architecture condition the decisions or should we think about what we need from the business point of view and then decide which layout is best for our solution? And what protocols do we need? Do we need all of them, a subset? How will we solve this problem for the future? And then we have the philosophy about how to deal with failure systems of the past were prepared to fail, adding redundancy for several critical components. And the philosophy was, if this fails, now in distributed systems with huge scale, we know that things are failing all the time. Everything fails. So we have to make the system intelligent enough and auto healing and resilient so it can repair itself with no intervention and no overhead for operations. Then we have some considerations about the grow model during the lifetime of the project. Will it scale up until it arrives to a size that we should have? We should uh, discard what we have and then buy a new and bigger one? Or will it scale out horizontally? Will it be an operations expense or a capital expense? Will we have to buy it big enough to cope with the loss for several years? Or are we planning in having some modularity to grow as needed? Then how will we finish this project? What happens when it's over? Are we going to migrate the data? Are we going to replace everything? What will we do when this 
end of life arrives. So as a conclusion for this segment, we see that we have a lot of things to think about when we are deciding about the future of our storage infrastructure in a company. And uh, the question is, do we really need to be managed by these concerns, these questions, these options? Don't we need anything different? Why is that our development team is calling us less and less each year? Why do, don't they need us? What are they doing? How can we have this agility and flexibility uh, in this 2020 age? If you agree with me that we need a mind shift, who will you partner with to design a modern storage infrastructure? Would you start a new business for phones with Steve Jobs? Or would you accept Albert Einstein as a partner in a new energy startup? The people that did things superbly in the past maybe can be of help in new directions. So take Avinash Lakshman. Maybe you don't know who is him. And let me explain. Avinash worked at Amazon and he has to deal with this problem of storage availability in tens of thousands of servers with millions of transactions for the shopping carts. So he has to design a system to make storage available, resilient, running in cheap commodity hardware, and this was the Dynamo project. He was a member of the team that had to balance consistency of the data, cost effectiveness, running on commodity hardware, performance, designing a new way of treating the data, and availability with infinite scale, symmetry, peer-to-peer -peer like relationship between the nodes and an always changing environment. When you have tens of thousands of servers, it's impossible to maintain the same base hardware forever. And Avinash next project was to work for Facebook, creating the Cassandra database. Its main purpose was to deal with the inbox search. The requirements were really high. Don't having a single point of failure, it has to be deployed in multiple data centers with no downtime allowed and running on commodity hardware for sure. Cassandra was shared as an open source project and it's a total success with these big companies using it like Apple, Netflix, Uber and other ones. Avinash took all of this knowledge and experience in the biggest systems on earth and said the definition of cloud is virtual, automated and self-service. How can we transfer this advantage to the enterprise storage world? In the next video I will explain you how this vision created Hedvig.